Good morning. So today I've been invited to give a talk in Cambridge about medical technology. So I thought I'd share some of my experiences of giving that talk, as well as some tips about public speaking. Now I would certainly not consider myself an expert in public speaking, um, but I have done my fair share of talks. And I find I'm at the point now where I can kind of relax and give the talk and not necessarily think too much about it. I do still get nervous before the talks, but not, not to an extent that, that bothers me too much. I'll link to some people who I think are legit experts at the end of the video. But these are a few of my kind of tips and suggested approaches for public speaking. So the first point I want to talk about is the value of hanging your speech off little hooks. I find it quite easy to think I know exactly where I'm going to go with a speech uh, in advance, but then when it comes and it's the pressure moment, I kind of forget my structure a little bit, and if I just forget the next stage, um, then that can mess up the whole speech. So the approach that I used to take when memorizing speeches, I think was quite risky, is that I would remember the first parts, and then I would remember the second part, the third part, and I would remember a link for each section. But if I ever forgot that link, then I would kind of lose and not really know where I wanted to go next. So what I now find very useful is I will know the overall structure in my brain very well, so that at any point I'm not too sure, I know exactly what's coming next and what's coming after that. And occasionally, if I'm giving a talk, I might skip ahead to one part accidentally, and then because I remember that structure, I can then go back to the, next, to the previous part. So for example, my speech today is talking about how we can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve healthcare and medicine. I know the opening statements for each of those sections, and I know the linkages between all of them, um, and I know the subpoints within those, and if you woke me up at any point in time, I would be able to tell you those kind of very easily. So what I hope that means is that during the pressure of giving this speech, even if I get a bit flustered or if I feel a bit nervous, I won't forget the exact sequence that I'm going to be following to deliver the talk. And I put in a lot of effort to make sure that I really knew this kind of core structure around which all the rest of the points hang off. I will talk about three examples positive, then three examples negative, then I will talk about the ways in which AI works and how to make slower state progress, then I will give an opening statement, then I will give three examples of good AI, then I will give three examples of bad healthcare, then I will give a shrimp salad, give a shrimp stew, I mean uh, machine learning in healthcare. Um. The next point I want to say is the importance of doing your research. So I heard a cool statistic which is that you should know three to four times as much as you're going to be talking about and you should know twice uh, what anybody in the audience is going to know. And I think it makes sense because then if at any point you know, you're not sure what to say next, if you know more on the subject, it's just gonna be a lot easier for you to then think of something from your knowledge rather than from what you memorized. Now, obviously you don't know exactly who's gonna be coming to the talk, so it's hard to guarantee that you're going to be twice or five times as knowledgeable as everybody in the audience, but it's more of a guiding principle that you should really be striving to have more knowledge on what you're gonna be talking about and the people attending so that you are adding value and making it worthwhile them coming. Anyway, I'm heading off to lectures now, so I'll see you in a bit. So I had a good morning of lectures, and I'm still running over the talk I'm gonna give kind of in my head, uh, just doing some, some kind of final preparation for that, and then um, I'm gonna head to Cambridge shortly in maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. So another tip that I want to share is the use of stories and analogies. Um, and I'm sure this is pretty uh, common knowledge because it's kind of public speaking 101. There's stacks of books that talk about how people remember stories much better than they remember facts. And a great book for people who are interested in this kind of thing is called Make It Stick or Made, Made to Stick. Yeah, by Chip and Dan Heath. And that's like an awesome, awesome book for this kind of thing. And in that book, they kind of point out the importance of how people remember things way, way better if there's like a story involved. So that's definitely something worth bearing in mind. And so therefore I'm trying to open mine with basically a story like that. So I start with, imagine if you noticed a mole on your dad's arm, took a photo on your smartphone and it turned out to be cancer. And I think it's, it's good to include one of those at the start as well. Just grab their attention. Something ideally as relatable as possible just to get people engaged in your talk. And out of interest that actually is something, that is a technology that's been developed. There's a super cool paper about how they can use pictures of moles to detect whether or not it's cancerous with a pretty good accuracy. Um, so that may well be something that we see in the future for sure. Yeah, I'm now ready to head to Cambridge and head over to King's Cross and grab the train. So I'll see you there.
now in Cambridge and I'm on the way to the talk. It's feeling very nostalgic because I went to university here but I haven't been in the town centre for like two, three years, so um, it's pretty cool to be around. But yeah, heading over to the talk now. I decided to walk rather than take the bus. Walking's a little bit slower, but I can enjoy the beauty of Cambridge. The next tip I want to share is remembering your first word and your last word. Nail the first sentence down and the last sentence of the talk. Because then no matter what, you can fluff everything else. You'll end on a high and start on a high. And those are kind of the moments when your nerves hit, particularly like the start. So having something prepared for that moment is what's going to stop you from messing up to begin with. And it's all down here from there. Hi everyone. My name is Anjan. Um, welcome to Medics Cambridge. Our first speaker is a medic graduate from Keys College. So I believe that healthcare is broken, but we have the tools to fix it. So then I gave the talk and I was pretty happy with how it went on the whole, although I did miss out one section which I was a bit annoyed about, uh, which is kind of ironic because I'd gone on about the importance of remembering the structure, but <laughs> there you go. But on the whole I was happy with how it went. In terms of the content of the talk, I was thinking about sharing it uh, in this video, but actually since I gave this talk I've been invited to give a TED talk at UCL, uh, which will be in early 2020, and I imagine that the content of that talk will be similar-ish to this one, so if interested uh, keep an eye out for that TED talk and I will be sharing an update when that does get released. And after my talk there are a couple of other uh, really interesting talks, so the next one was given by someone talking about how to secure finances if you're looking at developing an early stage health tech startup and there was a talk about the latest research looking into organ regeneration. Yeah so I finished the talk, um, it went okay like it didn't didn't go quite as I had hoped um, because I missed out like a section of it uh, that I just completely forgot. And I think I put it down to being quite tired. So that one quite nice section which was where I talk about my personal experiences and the stuff that I've done, which I just forgot about. Um, but what was super cool is that actually, like after the talk, someone then specifically asked about that. So then I did have an opportunity to go into it, but it just didn't tie in as well with my talk as I planned. But you know, it was still a very fun experience. A lot of people came up afterwards, asked questions, uh, chatted to me, uh, exchanged details, etc. So. Um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch and that'll be super cool. But I think, I think that ties me quite nicely. It's my final point, which is the importance of practice. We talking about practice. Because actually if I had done more practice or if I'd been a more practice speaker, I might not have made that mistake of missing that out. Um, so yeah, I think that's something that, that's useful for the future. Did people gain value from what I said? I hope so. Uh, did I gain a little bit more experience and practice? Yes. So it's kind of a win-win situation. I practiced, I practiced sharing these ideas and solidifying my thoughts and opinions. And hopefully other people benefited from me sharing those. So definitely glad I did it. Definitely looking forward to keeping in touch with the people I met and looking forward to doing similar things in the future. Uh, but yeah, I think it's probably too dark to film much more so probably call it a day hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one